and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're going to make a goat milk soap using this fragrance. It's called Orange Cranberry from Wholesale Supplies Plus and I have the word none if you can see written on the side here uh, because I looked up the reviews and the description on this fragrance and it says it doesn't cause acceleration, discoloration, separation, rising, none of that which is great, we love that in a fragrance. And um, I love to read reviews and descriptions on fragrances before I try them. Uh, it, I find it very helpful. So it smells great. <laughs> and I wanted to do something really simple, um, just kind of clean lines. So I am not gonna color this. We're just gonna use the goat milk uh, for the lye solution. And I want to just layer it and do an orange mica line going up so I, I got this electric orange from nurture soap which is really pretty and it's got a little bit of shimmer in there so i just want to do mica lines maybe maybe one or two going on all the way up and texture the top and use these little cranberry seeds that i got from brambleberry because those are just such a lovely color and i'll just put them on top so that if um i don't really want to use them as an exfoliant because they're a little bit a little bit harsh for an exfoliant for me but on top, how gorgeous is that? So that's the plan. This is just gonna be a luxurious goat milk soap, not any fancy swirls or anything going on, just layer it up and have it smell good, look beautiful. So let's go for it. I'm gonna get my hair pulled back, get my goat milk lye solution prepped and ready to go, and we'll make some orange and cranberry soap. All right, I'm prepping my goat milk solution here. So here is my sodium hydroxide, which is lye crystals. Here is my goat milk with a little bit of distilled water down in there that I had pre-dissolved some cane sugar in. So that's what's going on here. And over here is, I wanted to show you how, um, cause I wanna keep this very cool. I'm not gonna add my lye fast. I want the color to stay very light since this is gonna be a plain uncolored soap. So it's really important to add the lye very slowly, which means my silk would not melt in here. So what I had to do was I poured off two ounces of water over here. I put my silk fibers in here and brought it to a simmer. Well, that wasn't enough to melt the silk. So what I did was I took a teaspoon of my lye crystals off of my pre-measured lye, so it's not extra lye, it's coming from there, and I put it over the silk fibers in the water. It heated up enough to dissolve the silk. So this is my silk water. It's got little steam on the sides, but this is my silk water that I will be adding to this also. So that is how to add silk to a frozen milk solution, if you want it. If you don't want silk, don't even worry about any of that. But so here is my goat milk, here's my lye. I'm gonna start adding this very slowly and I'm not gonna rush this at all. I'm gonna try and keep the temperatures down on this so that it won't turn that vibrant bright yellow. <laughs> I wanna keep this as light as I can, which just means going slow. I'm still adding my lye slowly. Most of the goat milk is melted and I wanted to put it in the ice bath because it was still getting very warm. So I'm still just adding a little bit at a time, maybe a tablespoon or two at a time. Keeping everything as cool as I can. All right, I've got all of the lye in there. It did yellow up a little, but it's not that vibrant orange that I typically get. So it's staying on the cooler side, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add my melted silk and the rest of the lye that's in here. And that is how to add silk fibers to frozen goat milk or any kind of frozen milk. If you freeze your coconut milk or you're using cow's milk or um, oat milk, any time of frozen, that's a way to get silk in there. All right, I'm gonna get everything else pulled together and we'll come back and make some soap. All right, I've got all of my oils and butters in here melted and cooling, and I have my fragrance oil in here, and now I'm gonna add my uh, kale and clay and my colloidal oats to this soap. And this is, again, this is a two tablespoon measure, and I kinda do a little bit heaping, and put that in just about everything. So I'm gonna get this, the dry ingredients uh, dissolved, or anchored in here, get them all mixed in really well and let it sit and anchor, and then we'll come back and add the goat milk lye solution. All right, 
right, so here is the goat milk lye solution that does have the silk fibers, and I did add some sodium lactate, and I did add a quarter teaspoon of titanium dioxide that I blended in here. Um, I just wanted to make sure it stayed a nice color, a nice bright, um, because the fragrance oil, even though it says it doesn't discolor, the uh, the fragrance did have a, a orangey overtone to it, which, you know, probably goes back out. But anyway, I really wanted this to be a very creamy white. So that's in there. I have, I have my stick blender in here because I'm not doing any color swirls. Um, and I need a medium trace to do my mica lines. So I am going to be stick blending this cautiously um, to get everything mixed in and get a nice trace going. So again, you can stir with your stick blender. You don't have to blend the whole time. So stir and pulse. Okay, so as long as I'm not splitting off here, I'm gonna show you what trace is. So this is, um, Right now, this is like a thick cream consistency, and when I pull the stick blender up and swirl around, you can't really see any tracks or a trace on the top. That's what trace is. So I'm going to keep blending until I get one. I'll show you. I'm going to keep blending and get this a little thicker. All right. So you want to go from a thick cream consistency to a runny pudding consistency, if that makes sense. And this is starting, see, I don't know if the camera is picking up, but you can see tracks on the top here. So we've got a thin, a thin trace. So I'm going to pull this out and get my bottom layer poured in here. It's the next morning and I'm not quite ready to cut this yet, but I took a peek and uh, it's beautiful but a little dull so I want to steam the tops and get it really glossy looking. And I'm so tickled. I did cover this with a blanket last night so it went through gel phase. So I'm just waiting for my handy dandy clothes steamer to come up to a steam here and I will steam the tops and let it sit for, you know, a couple of hours till I'm ready to cut it. There we go. And you just run it very slowly across the top of your soap. And of course it gets it wet, but then as it dries it will keep sort of a wet sheen to it. A gloss. A shiny sheen. 
And this is a great way to get rid of soda ash. Now this did not have ash on it, which I'm thankful for, but um, the steaming will help reduce soda ash also. And there is the wet, glossy top, and we'll come back in a few hours and it'll be dry. So it's been a little over an hour. The soap is dry to the touch, but it did keep just a little bit of a gloss to it, and that's why I like to steam. So let's get this log split and see what we've got going on the inside. I've got this with the seeds side down so that they won't make drag marks through. And let's see how these mica lines came out. Oh, very pretty and subtle. Look at that. <laughs> that little twirl at the top is so cute. Now this is interesting to me. It has a ring around it, which means that as this oxidizes, this cream color is going to turn this sort of blush color. I think that I'm going to have some discoloration, which is interesting to me because the reviews on this fragrance said that it didn't discolor, but uh, only time will tell as um, as these cure out. But it's a, it's a very pretty blush color, but I can definitely see around all of this. So that was unexpected. But I'm loving the mica lines. I just think they add a little something and kind of get across the cranberry and the orange. And this little swirl on top was just um, some mica and a little bit of olive oil that I drizzled just to put a little interest up there. <laughs> 